Greed I and welcome, my name is Amarenska and today I will be talking about the books I read during the biannual bibliothon. Not necessarily for the challenges that were posed, except for the group book challenge, which was Empress of All Seasons, but just the books I read during the week of the Winter Biannual Bibliothon 2019. Because I thought it would be interesting to take part in it, but not necessarily do the challenges, because I did not want to take the time, nor did I have to have the time to pick a book for all the challenges but let's start with the group book challenge, which is the only challenge I know for sure I did. It's Empress of All Seasons by Miko Jean. And I did not think this was a great book. Like, it is a fun read. It is very enjoyable. But my main point against this book is that the plot summary is totally uh, written. It's written in there. That a book is totally about our main character Mari being a yokai taking part in a contest where yokai are not allowed to take part in. But then there is like less than one third of the book that's actually about that tournament. We get descriptions of the rooms that the tournament takes place in because there are elemental rooms. But they could have been way more extensive, the challenges could have been way more extensively described. There are riddles uh, that have a play a role in three of the four challenges, and all of they get first the character has a lot of trouble solving them, and then all of a sudden she has an answer, and when she has an answer, it goes very quickly to the end. You don't really see the other competitors much during the challenges. Which is a shame because you then you don't really get the feeling for that they are racing or not. The way that the deaths in this uh, challenge were handled was a little bit distant. And there were just a whole bunch of plot holes that did not sit well with me at all. Like, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but I almost can leave it alone. I just didn't like it took one third of the book to get to the city and get the tournament started. And then within one third of the book that set tournament was gone and we had a mega insta love situation. And then the rest of the book is um, about the royal wedding. And then there is a whole component, the a final part could have maybe been a separate novel. And then we have an ending that feels so rushed it could have been a novel and two novellas. So this could be have been a duology or a trilogy. With some novellas afterwards to give some more depth in what happens after. I just did not think the pacing of this book was well and there was so much more wrong with it. But it was still fun to read and the writing style was easy to understand. So it wasn't only a bad book, but it was also not the greatest book ever. I'm happy I got this book in a book box and did not buy it myself. I probably would not even have bought it myself because generally I'm not very inclined to buy a lot of YA books. But since I had it, I thought I might as well read it during the Bibliothon. Why not? Can't hurt. Because I wanted to give it a shot anyways. Then. I decided to pick up Nevermore, also a fantasy, but this time a, y a middle grade fantasy that is also rooted in someone leaving home and having to partake in trials to get into another society in that other book is trials to win a marriage to the royal prince. Here it is trials to enter a uh, society of magical people. And I did think the trial component in this book was so much better done. Yes, we still have a hundred pages uh, it takes to get actually to Nevermore, but then the rest of the book almost is fully taken up by the trials of Morgan has to face, the preparation, 
The periods in between are used to build up characters, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of dubious characters and we see Morgan and other characters doubt one another, especially Morgan, she doubts characters, she learns to know characters, we get to know more about the characters and the culture in Nevermore, which is fun. I thought this book was so much better done. It was so much fun and I definitely want to read the sequel. But this was the second book I read during the Bibliothon. Then I decided to give another shot to a book I DNF last year because Last year I did it with The Lies of Locke Lamora and I ended up giving it three stars, which is not that much of a high rating, but now I can see why people might love it, it was just not my book. So I tried to give The Spion by Paolo Coelho another shot, mostly because I just wanted to know how this book would end. It's a book about Matahari's life. It starts off when she is already imprisoned for quote unquote being a double spy. Turns out, it, during the book you get to know that she wasn't, which is already known in history anyway, and that she was uh, put to death for actually n no reason. Outside of war it would never have happened that way, they literally say it in the book. But what bothered me on this book was the fact that uh, the way Matahari was portrayed does not fit the way I got to learn about like the culture she grew up in, because I live in the city she was born in and raised in. I have lived near the place where she went to school to get a teacher, to become a teacher. Like, yes, she lived a very long time ago, so and the culture is dynamic, so it might have changed. I also know that your culture plays a very important role in how you think and feel. I also know that she would never have let her, left her daughter to become a free-spirited woman. She did what she had to do out of necessity. It's written in the book, but it's not necessarily feeling you get from her character in here. In all, it's just, it's written somewhere, but it, it, it's not portrayed well, so to speak. Her whole past is not really conveyed well, um, well, I think, in this book by Paolo Coelho, from foreigners who aren't Dutch and are not well acquainted with uh, this part of our history. They truly, truly tend to love this book because they think it's a very feminist book, but I don't think Matahari had in her mind to become a feminist. She just wanted to live and to get the money she needed to live. And that is what she did. That's basically all she did with a couple of abusive husbands and sexual harassment and assault during an education. I would have so much more loved it if it was actually a realistic portrayal of her life with called the culture she grew up in being a part of it because it was totally ignored which is such a shame because like my grandparents had parents who lived a little bit about in the time this takes place in which is about 1917 and before or 1918 and before like world war one uh, time period and it's just I've heard so many stories about how life was back then. I have seen documentaries about how the culture was in the cities. And I have had followed classes on Frisian culture and history. And this does not at all portray it well. So it's just, it does not portray it at all. It's just such a shame. I was not a big fan of this book, but I'm glad I finally finished it so now I can actually form an opinion about the entire book and not just about the part I read before. Then the last book I read, which is extremely tiny, it's a hundred pages, but the small pages, it's Als Frauen Wijs Waren by Marianne Frederiksson, which 
originally was a Swedish book, it's a translated work. I wish I could have read it in Swedish, but like, this is a book I once got from my father when they were cleaning out their bookshelves. And it's a book of contemplations about uh, women and the differences between men and women and how they had effect on Swedish culture and also a little bit about culture in, in other countries. You see the Saman people, which is in the northern part of Sweden and Norway, being treated very differently. So it has a little bit to do with like racism and mistreatment. Mostly the differences between men and women from a lot of different perspectives. Social, a little bit economical, educational, but also just scientific. And there is a couple of texts in here, essays in here, that don't necessarily have to do with being a man or a woman. The final one is about uh, why it is so hard to let go of books, for example, which is very interesting to read. It was not necessarily something new and something special, but it was interesting to read from the perspective of a book lover, because obviously an author, like, it does not seem weird that an author loves to read and loves to have a lot of books. And then she goes in depth about why it could be that it is so hard to let go of books, even if you have no trouble at all getting rid of other things in your life, like clothes, makeup, maybe cutlery and stuff you don't need. But why is it so difficult to get rid of books? It was just very interesting and fascinating. And it had a lot of wisdom in it. This is definitely a little book I would recommend a lot of people to read. I don't know what it is called in English. I just know the title in Dutch and I know Marianne Frederiksson is the writer and it was originally published in 1993. So it gives the perspective from more than 20 years ago, which is makes it even more interesting for one simple reason. I know a little bit how the Swedish uh, social climate is today. Not a lot, because I haven't really been there and I don't know the ins and outs in Sweden. But it's definitely very different from what it was like in this book. So you can see how much you can see a little bit of uh, the progress in the 20th century and you can see what has happened since the book was published, which is 15, 16 years ago, or I mean 25, 26 years ago. It's just interesting. You can see how culture and social things develop, definitely recommend. It wasn't five star, it was not something that enlightened me with a lot of things I didn't already know, but it still was very interesting to read from a historical perspective and there was a lot of wisdom in it. And it was very uplifting too. But this was what I read for the Bibliothon this winter. Thank you for watching and on to